there's a potential there for Florida State to to get there. It really just depends on how mature this team is. I'm interested to see how they're going to play this upcoming weekend with getting that high feeling of beating North Carolina on the road where a lot of people weren't expecting them to win that game whatsoever or really be close there into the fourth quarter. But they were the ones that were way ahead and North Carolina was trying to play catch up for a majority of that second half. And then they go into a bye week. And from what we've seen at the practices, it seems like things are just how they were last week or two weeks ago preparing for North Carolina. That's a really good sign to see. And Norvell said that yesterday he thinks that the practice might have been the best that he's ever seen during his tenure at Florida State, Mm -hmm. which is something a really, really good sign whenever you're facing the the worst opponent on your schedule this season that you're having some of your best practices. You take that any day of the week, and I think that's just a – it shows the true, you know, the true turnaround that I think Norvell and the staff are trying to do. I mean, th- these guys, there's there's no breaks in practices. Very physical this week. Um, really aggressive. I think the defense has had, I think the defense has won the week so far. You know, they'll practice tomorrow and we won't have media access. But this defense came hungry from the start on Tuesday morning. And there's guys having really good competition, good reps, good one-on-ones, good O-line, D-line going at it. And, you know, that's really a good sign to see. And guys have gotten are healthier now, too, with the little rest that they had, you know, able to see Deshaun Corbin practicing. And then you also see Devontae Love Taylor dressed and participating a little a few times in drills. Um, it's just a good thing to see in the middle of the season. And um, practices just haven't – they don't change. It's just the same thing. And that Norvell, you know – I know today's practice was up and down, and I saw that early on. I know he thought things were a little sloppy. The offense was kind of out of rhythm, but, you know, the defense is doing its thing and, you know, guys making mistakes here and there. But it's a it's a learning, learning game for a lot of these younger guys, and he knows that, and they're trying to build a whole new – identity in Tallahassee and it's just gonna it's gonna take a little bit longer but for them to have one of their best practices that Norvell has ever had in in Tallahassee with Florida State on you know for a team that should be beaten by 30 35 if not 40 um, I think that's a really good thing I think it's something to keep an eye out for for them to have a really solid day on Saturday now our our gentleman guy if you want to go back to that one Mark he's good please you just said what I was about to ask you right here on paper, you know, Jacksonville state is ranked in the FCS polls right now. They're a good FCS team. UMass is with all due respect to the Minutemen, the worst <laughs> team right now on our schedule of our 12 regular season games. Judging by what happened here on September 11th in Tallahassee on September 11th, Tell me, Logan, convince me. I'm giving you a chance right now. You can convince me why I should be optimistic that Florida State won't have the same letdown here that they did after a, a, a overtime loss to Notre Dame, everyone giving them credit. Hey, you played well. You played great against the top 10 team, and then you lose to an FCS team, first time in program history. Convince me that after a two-game winning streak, finally getting some life in them, that there's not going to be a letdown against UMass. I think it just goes back to what I was just saying about them being completely dialed in for this week and practicing well and them being competitive and them being a little feisty with one another. I think that's a great sign. Guys being healthy too, but you know, they could be all healthy and everything. And we saw with Jacksonville state, they could still, you know, blow that. And that, that just a mental thing for them. The talent obviously is levels and levels and levels ahead of what, that matchup was against Jacksonville state. And that's going to be even more of a margin between Florida state and UMass this upcoming weekend, but it's just a mental game for them. I think while bell is going to try to call, this is his super bowl of super bowls right Mm -hmm. here. And to potentially save his job here is to actually have this be a competitive game. And that's what he's going to try to do. But, you know, this one, I think is just going to be all about mental. I mean, it's going to be, you know, making sure you're, making your reads right, understanding what kind of scheme that their offense is going to be calling because I think they're going to do a lot of trickery with, with Florida State's defense. And it's just going to – I think the coaches, you know, they, they've got a good game plan for this, but they've just got to play smart. That's all it's going to be. It's going to be a, a, a mental game. But 
this let's be honest this game shouldn't there shouldn't be a game going into the third quarter at the halftime it should be over and you should look forward to potentially seeing Chubba Purdy out there and get some of the young freshmen on you, offense there you too. Love you some Chubba Purdy. You love him. I don't love I I I, I, I we know Chubba who QB1 Purdy. is. I haven't given a lot of love to Chubba Purdy yet. You you do I I will say this. I did watch UMass last year. I was at their game against FAU. And UMass scored a whole two points in that game. Mm. So they're not once again Let's just let's let's play politics for a moment. Let's be political with our answers here, just because of what happened earlier this season. They're not a good team, and mm-hmm. I, I think we are going to win easily. We'll give our predictions later on in the hour, but there's just it, it's going to creep in, and I, I feel like there's a lot of MSU fans who will be in that stadium on Saturday for a noon kickoff on the ACC network, probably followed by lacrosse or something, <laughs> that are going to be a little bit nervous just because of what happened one month ago month and a half ago. Jason, you're being kind calling them a not good team. They're one of the worst three to four teams in the country. We lost any room to talk smack. Oh, I understand. State through Hail Mary. That's all I'm saying. Absolutely. And, and if your team's going to meet a standard and eventually be a championship team, then you take that same work ethic, focus to every practice, to every game, regardless. To quote the master, it's about the process. You know, Nick Saban, it's about the process. But this team, just to to read you the scores, they lost to Pitt Mm 51-7. They lost to BC, somehow, somewhat stayed in the game, 45-28. They lost to Eastern Michigan, 42-28. They lost to Coastal Carolina, 53-3. They lost to Toledo, 45-7. Then they pulled out their first win of the season against the mighty Huskies of UConn, 27-13. I mean, any team that beats UConn should be feared. That, that's what I'm just going to say right there. <laughs> but but my, my concern also, and, and Logan, Mark, you guys want to jump in on this one. My concern is also, let's say Florida State comes out, big win, blowout win against UMass. Then my concern is that we can't really use this as a building block for the Clemson game the following week, the NC State the game. Because you look at our streak, our next three games after that are Clemson, NC State, and Miami. All three games that, on paper, we could win. All three games also on paper that we could lose. So that's what I'm saying. I I don't want to put too much on this UMass game. I guess my biggest goal for this UMass game, my key to the game, if you will, nobody gets injured. Jordan Travis doesn't get hurt. Jason Corbin doesn't get hurt. Jermaine Johnson doesn't get hurt. Nobody in the second. That's my goal in this game is that everyone leaves injury-free. I think this could be a perfect situation for Florida State because they're getting game reps. They're getting game reps against a real opponent of some level. And hopefully, if it is a four-touchdown game at halftime, they can work in waves of the depth chart, but they can still get in reps for all their key guys and their young guys. And they, they, they get a week off to a certain extent where they're not you know, hitting their lights out against an ACC opponent, but they're getting game reps to get ready for the Clemson game. You all also remember that Derwin James got injured in a game against the Charleston Southern team that we were beating. I believe the final score was, what, 52 to 8, 56 to 8? Logan, I'm not sure on that one. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. so that's, that's until the game ends and nobody's injured, nobody's hobbling off the field, <laughs> clean game, guys, just just clean. I think it would be, though, for like a big answer, though. I don't think, I mean, I think if Florida State, you know, annihilates UMass, I think that creates really good momentum, too. You you keep the winning streak going, but it's been a while since Florida State's annihilated teams that they should be annihilating. I think that answer right there, and it'll also make the fans happy, obviously, and you feel a little bit more better. But, I mean, you're not wrong, Jason. You want to keep a really healthy team going into Clemson because you know that is that is going to be a I think it's I think it has the potential to be a really good game um not how it used to be where Clemson that's over third quarter you know kind of knew that at halftime maybe but you know I think a good it would be good for momentum be great for recruiting just keep it going I know it's just UMass is UMass but putting some points on the board and just wrecking a team is something that Florida State we haven't seen be done in a while really the last thing was uh, North Carolina I felt like that was kind of over um, 
after Florida State put up 21 points in the third quarter and UNC didn't score anything like that, felt like, okay, this offense is training. That's the fun thing. It was, and I think Florida State fans will be fun to be in, will be excited to be in the stands to watch that offense in person because that was really fun to watch on TV. And Jordan, I mean, Jordan Travis was just everywhere. He was throwing well. He had guys open. The game call, the game scheme, and the game play, um, game like the play calling was really pretty and you know, they should be able to have a field day. A lot of guys should be able to get some uh, highlights this weekend. So we'll, we'll see. I think, I think though, even if they were to, you know, if they went 54 to 17, I think it's still a good, that's a, uh, it's big for FSU. And it, that- it stinks to say that, but that's big for FSU. Yeah. 